exclusively interviewing Law of the Dark Man. Yeah. And who is the sharp gold brick hustler, Law of the Dark Man? Me, you know, I'm just I'm a regular guy, man. Guy from the neighborhood, Crown Heights, Brooklyn, Gun Room, Michigan. You know, I plant my flag in different countries, you know, different cities, different states. The embassy, you know, we're coming with a lot of new elements to the hip hop game. AMG, Affiliates Management, Affiliates Music Group, you know. I manage a few different artists, you know, but I'm, I'm more like Barry Gordy or Quincy Jones, you know. I'm a composer, I'm an author, I'm a publisher, I'm a writer, I'm a performer, I'm a businessman, you know. When you began, share about Brooklyn Crown Heights and do you have any street stories you could tell us from the early night? I mean, you know, I was a kid. I did what all young kids do. I was a teenager. You know, I've been with the Wu-Tang since I was 15. I dropped my first album, Heist of the Century, when I was 18, you know. It's like, you know, I did what all kids do. Jump fences, ride bikes, play basketball, you know, read books, you know. And the classic Heist of the Century, selling yeah. over 400K of records. Yeah, yeah. Sold. Tell us about the days and times of rock. I mean, Heist of the Century is amazing. It's my first album, you know. We put it out late 90s, 99, November 24th. It was featuring Raekwon. It was featuring Ghostface. Master Killer You Got. It's featuring Maya Campbell. You know, we put it out independently. You know, I sold over 400,000 records, like $7 a record. So I was kind of doing the Master P thing or the Young Money thing a little bit before a lot of artists caught on to it. But um, that was my only album. Like I said, we made like actually 750. So I'm, I'm over, you know, independently I'm over triple platinum. So, you know, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of proceeds gross. I opened a few, you know, clothing stores. I invested in real estate. I started the affiliates management, you know what I mean? I um, have a few artists, Willie the Kid, a few other DJs, and um, I expanded to Michigan and Atlanta. So, you know, we're doing what we do. Now, you know, I did a couple Wu-Tang tours. You know, we did the Wu-Tang tour 2010, the Wu-Tang tour 2011, 2012. Now we're doing the Raekwon Unexpected Victory Tour with LAD, you know? And many incredible appearances from On Soul Assassins, Jizzle Beneath yeah. the Surface, Ghost yeah. Dog, Inspector Deck, yeah. Uncontrolled Substance, and Shaheem's Greatest Story Never Told. And Old and Dirty Bastard, I Got yeah. Your Money. Definitely. Old Dirty Bastard, I Got Your Money album. Almost double platinum, you know what I mean? L.A. Day featured on there. Then I, I wrote a few songs for Vanilla Ice. You know, Vanilla Ice is like the first Eminem. You know, he was a good friend of mine, Rob, you know what I mean? Shout out to him. You know what I mean? I, I wrote like three joints on his new album. And I executive produced all the Gangsta Grill albums. Gangsta Grill Volume 1, Gangsta Grill Volume 2. So, you know what I mean? I've composed songs with Akon, Snoop Dogg, Twister, Nelly. You know, a lot of the greats. Jeezy, Rick Ross, you know, Raekwon the Chef. You know, and um, I wrote hooks for Trey songs and... You know, we've did different things with Bobby Valentino and Willie the Kid, but the Embassy AMG, you know, we got we got something we got something for you to hear. And your goal is to help hip hop grow. Elaborate on this as well as your role in AMG and your contribution in the business. Um, you know, I'm the president and owner of the A logo, Embassy Entertainment, AMG, you know. Like I said, um I write for a lot of different artists, you know what I mean, as well that I've named before. A lot of multi-platinum artists I've wrote for. But um, I just want to put out good music and good hip-hop and help good hip-hop, you know, take over, you know, and come to the forefront. Because there's a big difference between rap and hip-hop, you know. Hip-hop is from the culture, you know what I mean, and, and rap, just putting words together that rhyme. But hip-hop really has morals and stories. I have a lot of different stories that I told on my album, Heist of the Century. You could um, Twitter me, you know, CEO LAD. You could YouTube me, LAD, or a lot of dark man, you know. It's a lot of different ventures. You could Facebook me, Embassy, AMG, all one word, Embassy, AMG. So, you know, I put on different parties and, and different events in different states and different after parties and different tours, you know. And being involved with the UK Academy with the best seat in the house at a young age, what did RZA teach you? Oh, Riz is my mentor, you know what I mean? Shout out to the Riz Rector. That's my mentor. Like I say, he's been my mentor since I was about 15 years old. And um, he's taught me a lot, you know what I mean? Like one thing I tell you, tell you he said, um, 
it's better to have 50 gold albums than to have two double platinum albums. Now y'all can add that up mathematically, but I'll say it again. I, you know, the greatest thing he taught me was it's better to have 50 gold albums than to have two double platinum albums. You know? So you know, I take that and run with it. For sure. And so many mixtapes from Return of the Dark Man, Dead Presidents, yeah. Midwest Kush, and yeah. Pyrex Edition. Yeah. Share the best highlights. The yeah. brand is notorious. Yeah. Working with DJ Drama and yeah. working on the song Daydreaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daydreaming. Daydreaming. Akon, Snoop and T.I. Actually, Akon gave me a couple songs. And um, I actually brought Akon that beat. I got that beat from Drummer Boy. And um, we composed that song from scratch. You know what I mean? It was the number 18 song in the country on um, Rhythmic Radio. And, um, you know, like I said, you can check, check my archives from Return of the Dark Man with J Love to Dark Man 2 to Living Notoriously with DJ Drama to Living Notoriously Part 2 to um, Midwest Kush with DJ Moondog and DJ Head DiBiase. I got Midwest Kush Part 2 coming out February 25th for All Star Weekend. It's on datpiff.com. At datpiff.com, you know, we're going to put it out all over online, mixtape touring, you know, all the mixtape sites, but it's featuring Jim Jones, got a new record with Baby from um, Young Money, Cash Money, it's featuring Method Man, it's featuring a legend, you know what I mean, a cl I, like to, I like to deal with legends, you know, Cool G Rap, you know, and um, it, it's hot, February 25th, Midwest Kush Part 2, Pyrex Edition. And touring, share your best moments as well as Woofest and the largest crowd they've ever rocked, as well as South Africa, Dubai, where else? Man, I rocked in South Africa, I rocked in Dubai, I rocked in Paris, I rocked in Germany, you know, we've been to Sweden, you know what I mean, Canada, Toronto, I've been all around the world, Japan, I rocked in Japan like three times, you know, but the biggest crowd I probably ever rocked was, um, Probably the Woo Fest in, um, in LA had like 9,000 people. But I rocked before with Jay Z, you know what I mean, which was a big crowd. And I rocked before with 50 Cent, you know, which was a big crowd. So, um, you know, but um, the Wu Tang tour, the Wu Fest 2012 was amazing. Nokia Theater, Congress Center in Chicago, intersection in Gungu, Grand Rapids, Michigan, you know. And many singles from So Wet, Life in the Line, and Fast Lane, and Love for Money, I Want It All. Share about the other ventures from running a retail business and being in real estate. I mean, you know, real estate is one of my greatest investments, you know what I mean? Um, music and starting Embassy Entertainment and AMG is one of my greatest investments, you know. The Embassy Entertainment, I mean, it's a broad spectrum of business, man, you know. We got the clothing line coming. You know what I mean? The Embassy line, we got the AMG Athletics, the sportswear coming. You know, we're doing a few different movies. You know, I'm working with Rizzo on a few different soundtracks. I'm here. And life and times of Law of the Dark Man with production from Primo, Rizzo, Alchemist, Havoc, Green Lantern, Focus, Scott Storch. Any other collabs that sounds proper, it's definitely been a minute. No, I, I mean, I got, I got Drummer Boy. I got some joints with High Tech from Aftermath. I got some joints with a new producer from Gun Rule, Sound Effects. You know, I got joints with Sky Storage. I got some new joints coming with RZA. I mean, stay tuned, man. It's like a fruit basket. Each song I make is like a fruit basket, you know. I got green grapes. I got purple grapes. I got papaya. I got pineapple. I got strawberries. You know, it's very flavorful. And the best hip-hop memory you've been part of or contributed to? Uh, the Wu-Tang Forever album. I think it sold like 10 million. Cash rules, still don't nothing move but the money. I did that hook with Method Man. You know, it's like a 10 million seller. It's probably like one of my greatest accomplishments. The legendary Wu Tang Forever album. You know what I mean? That's the greatest shit I've ever seen. You know what I mean? That's yeah. That's incredible. And you have anything to say to Canada? Canada, I love y'all. You know what I mean? I love y'all. Beautiful women, beautiful weather, beautiful weed. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's how we do it. Vancouver is my first time here. L.A.D., a.k.a. A lot of dark, man. Holla at me. Big guy and shouts. You know, shout out to the Wu-Tang family. We like the Kennedys, you know. If you know anything about Robert Kennedy, and, you know, John Kennedy, you know, Jack Kennedy, you know. Embassy Entertainment. Klansman, baby. And 
shouts to Gangsta Grills, MC yeah. Entertainment, yeah. and Law of the Dark Man, and yeah. this is the Archivist, and you already know the name, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the Archivist. You know how we do it. Vancouver's finest, baby. One love.